I know it's just my opinion, but in my opinion, that's the greatest hymn that's ever been written. I love that hymn, oh, Christ the Solid Rock has. Uh, Brother James has brought his guitar again today, and he's got a song picked out for us. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to tell you, Brother James, I, I, I just love you, and, and I'm so glad that the Lord has led you to us because you just you just blessed me in such a special way. So I want you to take your time and testify and sing whatever the Lord's put on your heart. Thank you. There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea.
I'm not sure that I'll even be able to get through everything that the Holy Spirit would like me to minister on today. So we may very well be entering into a series of messages. I don't know. But to start with, I want us to be in the book of Revelation, chapter number 12. Revelation, chapter number 12. Jesus, we have everything that we will ever need to get us through eternity. It's all inclusive. It covers everything. There's nothing lacking. Oftentimes in our lives, I remember preaching last week about what we're lacking. Oftentimes in our lives, we feel like we're lacking something. Somewhere something's missing. Maybe like we forget forgotten something and we don't know what it is that we've forgotten. I'm never going to be able to forget last week's sermon because I stood up here and said, you ever feel like you're forgetting something and I had forgotten to do the last song when the girls were back there just talking at the bit waiting for one thing. Sometimes in life we are lacking things, but in Christ Jesus we lack nothing. The gospel of Jesus Christ is all encompassing. And everything that we will ever need to get us through this life and through eternity can be found in Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful for that. Today, hopefully today I can get through this message. If not, we'll pick up on it again next week. And if I can't get through it all next week, we'll pick up on it again the week after. I feel really strongly about the message that the Lord has laid upon my heart. Three things. Three things that you absolutely cannot do without. Say this with me. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Faith. Faith. And the resurrection. The resurrection. Those three things. We may be able to do without this. We may be able to do without that and get through life absolutely unscathed. But without the blood of Jesus Christ, without faith, and without the resurrection, we will never make it through eternity. And here's the thing. This message that's upon my heart is a message that can be preached to a lost and a dying world and draw even the, the most vilest sinner to Jesus Christ that he or she might be saved. But it's also a message for the church. Those of us who are in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus is in us, there's great power, there's great deliverance, there's great encouragement to be found in the message that the Lord has put upon my heart. So I don't want to rush through it. I also don't want to be preaching to you until 6 o'clock tonight. So if I have to divide it up, we'll divide it up. Uh, I'm going to read just a few verses of Scripture this morning. And then like I say, I'm going to be all over the Bible. But in the book of Revelation chapter 12, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. There appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten thorn, horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars out of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God and they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now start paying very close attention. And there was war in heaven. How many of us know that there's war between the child of God and between our enemy the devil? How many of us understand that every day we live, we are soldiers in a war for God? How many of us understand that every day that we live, we face another spiritual battle over and over and over again? 
again, you are not going to get out of this life without bruises and band-aids, my friend. It's not going to happen. We are daily in a battle fighting for the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The lives that we live, the testimonies that we leave behind are all for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. I believe in my whole heart that we need to get back to an old foundational high preaching. I've been saying this over and over and over again. The reason I continue to say it over and over again is because I believe the Lord is stirring a revival in my heart to go back into the old ways. To revisit some of the old fundamental things that the church was founded upon that we've gotten so far away from. We are not called to get through this life just for our own pleasure and for our own ease. Every day that we live is another opportunity to give honor and glory to God. Amen. Everything that we do has an effect on someone else. Every word that we speak has an effect on another person. And I wonder today, as we get into the scripture, what is it that we are doing or not doing that we can either do without or not do without at all? There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. Hear me today, my friend. Today is the day of salvation. If today you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you are not in Christ Jesus, today is the day that the Holy Spirit of God is revealing a truth to you, and today is the day that you need to reach out and receive Jesus Christ. Maybe you are in Christ Jesus. Maybe you are saved from your sin. But we're living in a sin-filled world. We're living in a world today that there is so much circumstance and situation around us that is designed by the hand of our enemy to distract us from keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ. To distract us from doing what we know we should do. From saying what we know we should say in order to give Jesus Christ honor and glory. This world today is not your friend. This world today is your enemy. And we get so distracted by the lures of the enemy that we are no longer giving honor and glory to the Lord. So there are some maybe here today you need to be saved from your sin. There are some here today maybe you are saved from your sin, but you need to be saved from your circumstance. We're in a battle. It's plain to see. And the Bible says in verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him, and they overcame him. Say this with me. And they overcame him. How did they overcome him? By the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Can I ask you a question? What are some things today that you just cannot do without? I spent a little bit of time asking people this down throughout the last couple of days. I asked some folks my age, what can you, what are some things that you just cannot do without? What is it about your routine that if you didn't have would throw your whole day off? And I've heard so many things. Well, if I don't have my coffee in the morning, I can't hardly go. I, I've heard him say, I've heard him say, I just, I tell people, don't even talk to me until I get the second cup. Because I'm not good for anything until I have my coffee. I don't want the radio on. I don't want the news on. I don't want my phone ringing. I don't want to talk to the kids. I don't want to pet the dog's head. 
some younger folks and some older folks alike. You wouldn't believe how many people told me, I just don't think I can make it through a day without my cell phone. I got that phone attached to my head, and I can't go. It's like, you know, back when I was younger, there was, a, there was an advertising campaign for a credit card, American Express, and their, their, their catchphrase was, don't leave home without it. I think our cell phones have become a, our new American Express. We cannot leave home without it. We go out to eat, and we see so many people that are just sitting numbly at the table, husbands across from their wives and wives across from their husbands, and children, and even grandchildren, all sitting at a table out for dinner as a family, but nobody paying no attention to one another because they're all just on their phone or on their devices. I just can't get through a day without my cell phone. Do you know how many people forget their cell phone at home on their way out to work? They grab their dinner bucket, they get their coffee because they got to have their coffee. And they run through the checklist, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this, okay, I'm going. And they run out of the door, they put their stuff in the car, they start the car, they get out of town, they're two miles away from work, and they say, oh, I forgot my cell phone. So they turn around, and they go all the way back home, and they get their cell phone, only to arrive at work late. Watch your excuse. I just had one of them days, you know. Just say it. I can't get through the day without my cell phone. I grew up, I grew up in an era where there were no cell phones. I grew up in an era where a lot of people didn't even have an indoor plumbing. <laughs> really nice bathroom, it was an outhouse and it had two seats in it. And I never could quite figure out why there was a two seat. <laughs> We have got the comforts of a Cadillac inside our own homes today. We wouldn't know what it was like to not have running water in our house. We wouldn't know what it was like to have to go outside in the middle of the winter to sit down in a two-seater outhouse because you had to use the restroom. There's a generation of people today that think that's absolutely barbaric. Can't do that. I gotta have. I gotta have. I, I gotta. I gotta. I gotta have. I gotta have. I gotta have. What is it that you just got to have to get through this life? Can I tell you? I believe wholeheartedly that we can get through life without a cell phone. It's been done. I believe wholeheartedly that we can get through life without cable television because I also remember having two channels and some rabbit ears. I also remember putting tin foil on the rabbit ears, hooked on with some uh, with some paper. Or, Close pins. And if it was a little bit fuzzy, you could just stand up there and touch that piece of tin foil and it would come in and then you'd leave your hand off and go out and you'd touch it again. I spent all evening hanging on to a rabbit ear just so that I could watch a program. Can I tell you? I think we can get through life just fine without our devices because we've got it's been proven. I think we can get through life without cable television because we've done that. I think we can get through life without central air conditioning. Because we've done that. But I heard I heard some drums in there. Preacher, don't talk about that one. You know what? We had air conditioning in our house. When I was a kid, we had air conditioning in our house. So I'm not trying to be hypocritical. The air conditioner was in mom and dad's bedroom. And the door was closed. We're all sitting there going, oh, it's hot in here. That's how I got my love for sweet tea. I could just kind of knock the heat. We can get through life without air conditioning. <coughs> it's been done. You can get through life without all of these things, but I tell you, in the power of the Holy Ghost of God, you will not get through eternity without the blood of Jesus Christ, without faith in the Lord, and without the resurrection.
since Satan was cast out of heaven. It's no big secret that we're living in a fallen world. It's no big secret that we're living in a sinful society. We don't corner the market on that. It's not exclusive to our lives only. There have been Christians who have been living among a wicked and a sinful world since Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. And we're surrounded by it. And it's all we see and it's all we hear and it's all we experience and sometimes it knocks us around and sometimes we get tired and sometimes we get weak. But I'm here today to tell you that there's still salvation in Jesus Christ. I'm here today to tell you that there's still power in the name of His Christ. And I'm here today to tell you that there's still strength in knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse number 11 says, And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb. We've quit preaching the blood today. We've quit teaching the blood today. And I believe with my whole heart that we need to get back to an old-fashioned preaching of the blood of Jesus Christ because not only does it save us from our sins, it protects us from the attacks of the devil. There's a song that I love to hear. It's not scriptural, but it absolutely could be. There's a song that says, if Satan wants me, he'll have to walk through the blood. And there's nothing more powerful that you're ever going to experience than the blood of Jesus Christ. It has the power to save the most vilest of sinners. And it has the power to keep every saint that has ever fallen down at the feet of Jesus Christ. God not only had the power to convict you, Jesus Christ not only had the power to save you, but the blood of Jesus Christ also has the power to keep you. And I'm not afraid to preach that message. We are kept by the power of God, the Bible says. What is the power of God? The blood of the Lamb and the testimony, the word of their testimony. That's how they overcame. I wonder today, what do we need to overcome? We can overcome it the same way. They overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and that they love not their lives till the death. What did Jesus say? He who seeks to save his life shall lose it, but whosoever would lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. If Jesus Christ isn't <laughs> sitting in the chair, then he needs to be sitting in the chair. If we're sitting on the throne, then we have become our own God. We have become our own Lord. We have become our own master. It's Jesus Christ who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If he's not sitting on the throne in your life, then he is not your king. He is not your Lord. He is not your master. He is only the Lord and master over the things in your life that you have allowed him to set on that throne. But those things that he is no longer sitting on the throne, to expect. Jesus Christ needs to be the center. And we need the blood. We cannot get through eternity and we cannot get through this life as blessed as we can if we neglect the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve, when Eve was deceived by the serpent and convinced her to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when he showed her that it was a fruit that was good to look upon and good for food, Eve was deceived by the, by the words of the serpent. And she took the apple and she ate it and then brought it and gave it to her husband. And he did eat. And the scripture teaches us that as soon as they ate of that tree, their eyes were open and they realized that they were naked. Sin entered into the world through and by the temptation of that old serpent, the devil, as he tempted Eve with that forbidden fruit. They call it an apple. I don't know if it was an apple. I just know it was the fruit of 
of that tree. And the Bible says when they ate of it, their eyes were open and they saw their nakedness. And so what did they do? They wove together fig leaves to cover their nakedness before them. And today, mankind is doing everything in their power to cover up their own depravity between them and God. Mankind is doing everything today to cover up their sin so that it cannot be seen. But hear me today, it doesn't matter what kind of a fig leaf we try to hide behind. It doesn't matter how we try to cover up our depravity or cover up our sin. We still stand naked before the eyes. Adam and Eve had their time in the garden. 
Adam came to Eve. Eve knew Adam. She conceived. She bore a son. She named him Cain. Then she bore another son. She named him Abel. And these two brothers grew up. And Cain, Cain, the Bible says, was a tiller of the ground. He was a farmer. He planted corn and beans and potatoes and tomatoes and cucumbers and all that good stuff. That's what Cain did. But Abel was a keeper of the sheep. He was a shepherd. And the day came where these two boys came before God and offered up their sacrifices. Cain, being a farmer, brought some stuff out of his garden. He brought it to God and God had no respect for Cain's sacrifice for Cain's offering. But then here comes Abel, and Abel brought the firstlings of his flock and the fats thereof. And he offered it up to God. In other words, it was a blood sacrifice. And God looked upon Abel's sacrifice, and he had respect unto it, and he received it. Cain's he rejected, Abel's he received. Do you know how many churches have argued and fussed over why did God do that? And there's so many theologies and so many doctrines and so many different things. For me, it's really pretty easy. God responds to the blood. That fruit that, that Cain brought was a work of his own hands. It's something that he did. It's something that he could put before the Lord. Abel fell upon a fundamental teaching that we need to follow upon. God responded to the blood between those two brothers. And hear me today. God still yet responds to the blood. We are not saved by our own works. We are saved by the work of Jesus Christ. We are not blessed by our own works. We are blessed by the works of Jesus Christ. If you want your soul to be saved, you've got to go through Jesus Christ. If you want your life to be blessed, you've got to stay in Jesus Christ. We cannot earn our way into heaven and we cannot earn our way into the grace of God. We have to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Moses in Egypt land. God told Moses, I am going to send the angel of death and you need to go and you need to kill a lamb. You need to slay the lamb. There's a whole long list of things that how they had to roast it and they had to eat it with bitter herbs. But you need to take the blood of the lamb and apply it to the doorpost of your house because when I come through, if I see the blood, I will pass over. But wherever I don't see the blood, death will enter into that house and it will take the firstborn of every home. It will take the firstborn of every cattle. But when I see the blood, I will pass over you. He said, when I see the blood. He did not say, when I see the church that you attend. He did not say, when I see your religion. He did not say, when I see your good works. He did not say, when I see that you do everything that you can do to be helpful to the people that you live around. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Once again, showing that our works before the Lord is not now, hear me today. This might get into the second part of the message when I start teaching to you about faith. We're not saved because we work. But because we're saved, then we work. We don't bear fruits so that we can get saved, but after we're saved, we bear fruits. I know many of people who name the name of Christ, but when it comes to bearing fruit, there's no fruit there. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered, I studied on this because it bothered me. Sometimes I read scriptures and it bothers me. And I remember studying about this. Do you ever remember when Jesus came upon the fig tree seeking fruit on it? And he found none. And he cursed the fig tree because it wasn't producing any fruit from a distance. He looked from a distance. He saw from a distance. Behold, 
He saw the fig tree. And he came to it expecting to find some fruit on that fig tree. Why would he have expected to find fruit on that fig tree? You ever ask yourself that kind of questions? I do. And it bothers me until I find an answer. So I prayed and I studied and I studied and I prayed and I prayed and I studied and I studied and I prayed and what I've come to find out that not all fig trees, but some fig trees bear their fruit before they bear their leaves. So Christ, looking upon this fig tree that was full of leaves, wholeheartedly expected to come upon this fig tree and be able to pick the fruit and to eat it because he was hungry. But when he got he saw the tree, he saw the leaves, and there was no fruit on it. And he cursed it, and it died. We don't want to preach that. That's too hard. That's too harsh. Jesus Christ is the vine, and we are the branches. And any branch in him that bringeth forth not fruit gets hewn down and cast into a fire. That fig tree, that fig tree was cursed and died. The leaves were on it. It looked good. It should have had its fruit, but it bore none. You want to know what religion will do to a person? You want to know what sitting in a pew will do to a person? Listen, listen, listen. I'm glad to have you here. I hope to see you come again next week. And I hope that you bring a friend or two. I would love to see this church filled up. But we need to lean on the blood of Jesus Christ and not on our heart. We can look good. But if we're not bearing fruit, if we're not acting in love, if we're not reaching out in compassion, if we're not living in humility, if we're not being hospitable, if we're, if we're not doing the things, if we're not living and acting out of love, out of joy, out of peace, out of patience, out of temperance, if we're not showing forth these things, we're just a fig tree with a bunch of leaves. We need the blood of Jesus Christ. Why do you think when John the Baptist was in the river Jordan baptizing people as they came repenting of their sins, that he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Why didn't he just say, Behold God's Christ. Why didn't he just say, Behold the Messiah cometh. Why didn't he say, This is my cousin from over yonder. Jesus, our mama, we're pregnant at the same time. Why didn't he why did he say behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world? He referred to Jesus as the Lamb of God because Jesus is the Lamb of God. He wasn't Tyler and Dearman. He was telling the truth. He was preaching. He was prophesying. This is the one I was telling you about whose shoes I'm not worthy to bend down and unloose. I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me that will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. This, this is him. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Hmm. In Christ Jesus we can overcome our sin. In Christ Jesus we can overcome our struggles in Christ Jesus, we can overcome those things that hold us back, that keep us from God's glory. What is it today that you might need to overcome? What is it today that I might need to overcome? Is it our pride? You know, pride stops us from an awful lot of things. Amen. I ain't wrong, preacher. <laughs> okay. You'll never convince me if that's your testimony. I'm not always right, preacher. Just 99.9% .9 of the time. I don't have to always be right. It just turns out that way. <laughs> I always knew I was going to marry. How did, how, did, how did I hear that? How did I hear that? I always knew that someday I would marry Mr. Wright. I just didn't know his middle name was going to be old. <laughs> Pride is a horrible thing. 
Pride will cause bitterness inside your heart. And once that bitterness begins to grow, it will separate you from everything that is holy and righteous in your heart. You'll become angry. You'll hang on to grudges. Forgiveness will be a thing in the past. You'll say things like, I would forgive. But, aren't you glad that Jesus didn't use that three-letter word when it came to our forgiveness? Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Pride is one of those things that we need to overcome. <clears throat> Self-sufficiency is one of those things that we need to overcome. You cannot get through this life on your own. Even the lost have to understand that you cannot make it through this life on your own. We need one another. We need Jesus Christ. We need God the Father who created us. We need God the Son who saved us. We need God the Holy Spirit who fills us. We cannot make it on our own. We need to get rid of our self-sufficiency. We need to get rid of our pride. We need to get rid of our addictions. There's people in our world today that are addicted not only to drugs and alcohol, but addicted to people and things and approval. How many people just cannot make it if they don't feel the approval of their peers? There was a time in my early preaching where all my preaching brethren were amen and me. It just drove me nuts. And now I'm telling you, I can preach my message just as hard and long and loud and powerful in a church where you can hear a pin drop as I can if they're shouting down the roof. Because the calling in my life does not depend upon your approval of what I'm saying. The calling in my life depends upon the one who saved me and the one who called me. And if I'm not true to that, if I'm not true to him, I will never lay my head down on a pillow tonight and get a good night's rest with a clear conscience. I will be tormented all night long until I crawl out of that bed and fall on my face before my Savior and say, forgive me. I let myself get in the way today and I, 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 I did not do what you needed me to do. I can preach rather men like it or rather men don't, but so many people today are so to approval. They need to be. They need. I don't know. Help me, Lord. How do I preach this? They need. They need approval. They need people to say, I like that. They need people to say, I'm with you. They need people to say, what we need is the blood of Jesus Christ. What we need is to not be men pleasers, but we need to be God pleasers. And hear me today. You want to know what I found out in my life and in my walk with the Lord? When I stopped trying to please people and started living to please God, the people in my life were better pleased. I don't know how it worked. I don't know how it happened. But even my dog wound up liking me more when I put Jesus Christ in the seat instead of myself. There's some things that we cannot get by without. We can get by without cell phones. We can get by without cable television. We can get by without central air conditioning. But we cannot get by without the blood of Jesus Christ. I wonder today, what is it that you need to overcome? What is it today that has got you trapped? We're going to have to do a series. We'll be here till 3 o'clock if I keep going. I have to be made through the blood. Yet. What is it today that has got you feeling defeated? What is it today that has got you feeling trapped? What is it today that has got Is it sin? Is it sin in your life? Oh, preacher, I'm sorry. I asked one. Not too long ago, I asked a fellow I was talking with. He seemed like he had a good spirit about him. And I said, I just got to ask you, are you a Christian? He said, no, praise God, I'm a Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't realize it. He opened up the door for a 
really good conversation over that. What is it today that we need to overcome? Have you got sin in your life? Have you got something you're worried about or scared of? Is there a hardship? Is there a family issue? Is there an internal issue? Is there something today that is keeping you short of the glory of God? I'm not, I'm not saying lost and undone. I'm saying to the church. Is there something you need to overcome? Is there a habit that you've tried and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried? Do you know, I'm going to get transparent before you here. For the longest time in my life, there was a little green can about that big around that had me like a bull with a ring in its nose. I'd tell myself I'm going to throw this down, and I'd throw it down, but I'd pick it back up sometimes literally. Boom, and the trash it would go. Within a few hours, I'm rifling through the trash to dig it back out. <laughs> that stuff had me hooked. Line and sinker. Oh, reel me in. And finally, one day, I woke up and I remember telling somebody who asked me about smoking. <laughs> and I remember telling them, I don't know if it will keep you out of heaven, but it will sure get you there a lot quicker. And I woke up and I had such conviction on me that I threw that stuff down and I put it underneath the blood of Jesus Christ and he delivered me from it.
Father God, I come before you today in the name of Jesus Christ, and I just praise you for your word. Your word is the truth, and the truth shall set us free. Let every heart in this church house this morning be made free today in Jesus Christ. I thank you for the blood. I praise you today, Lord. I know that it's old-fashioned. I know there are those that turn their eyes up to it. I know there are those that close their ears because we've heard it over and over and over and over again. But I praise you today, Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not just there for the salvation of the soul, but it's there to see us through this life and to give us power and to help us give you glory. We claim your blood upon each of these people that are here today. We claim your blood upon all of their needs. So many hands have raised high in our presence today, Lord. And I don't know what it is they're seeking. I don't know what it is that they're praying for. But Father, I see the tears flowing down their cheeks today. And I know that with one drop of your precious blood, all of these problems and circumstances can be taken away. Lord, let them find deliverance. Let them be overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Father, I love these people. Each and every one. And I know that you do too. So I'm going to ask you once again, Lord, to please keep them all safe from harm's way. And bring us back at our next appointed time. And once again, we can worship you in spirit and in truth. All honor, glory, worship, and praise will give unto thee. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.